So again, Jesus is addressing these sin. If Jesus had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. What is he saying? What is Jesus trying to tell us? He is making a very important statement in this. He is stating that look, I am the final revelation of God. I am the person who is the very essence of God's love. What you see in me is what is exactly what God is like. If I had not come and spoken to you, you would have no sin. Now that I have spoken to you, you have no excuse for your sin. So when the Holy Spirit comes and takes everything that Jesus taught and revealed about God, when we are convinced and convicted of that truth that Jesus Christ has revealed, when we are convinced and convicted, keep that in mind, which is the work of the Holy Spirit, and we reject that, then that is sin for us because we have no excuse for sin. Verse 23, he who hates me hates my father also. Verse 24, if I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. And what works did Jesus do? Every act, every facet of Jesus' life was giving a revelation of God's character. Every facet of his life is giving a revelation of God. If I had not come among them, if I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. Now that Jesus has given that revelation of God and who he is and the end every act and every activity of his gave this revelation of God now when they say if I had not done them, when Jesus says if I had not done among them the work which no one else did no one else you must keep that in mind no one prior to Jesus Christ no one had did or had done the work which Jesus did and that is very important for us to grasp because sometimes we are locked in with the mindset of what other revelation that we have received that does not fit with Jesus and we give that priority or preference. So what Jesus is saying, if I had not done among them the works which no one else did, which means to say prior to Jesus, prior to Jesus, no one And that's including what? All the revelation that the, that the people had at that time from the Bible, which was the Old Testament. So Jesus comes, and then what he does? What no one else did, what no one else had revealed, what no one else had taught, he gives that understanding. And once that is rejected, then they have no excuse for their sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. How they have hated both Jesus and the father. The hatred that they have for Jesus and the father, dear ones, is because the revelation that Jesus is giving of God does not fit with their mind. So since it doesn't fit with their mind, what they have done? They have ended up hating even the God that Jesus is revealing. And if they are hating the God that Jesus is revealing, they are also hating Jesus. But this happened that the world might be fulfilled which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. So what Jesus has just stated in these <coughs> passages we have just looked at, in very clear terms that they hated me without a cause. Why? 
Very clear, dear ones. The revelation that Jesus gave of God did not fit with their understanding of God. From their understanding of the Bible that they studied, that very understanding was contrary to Jesus' revelation. And I will help us to see this way. When the Apostle Paul, before he became the Apostle Paul, he was Saul. Did he know his Bible? Of course he did. We are very clear that he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was a lawyer of the law. <coughs> he knew the scriptures. But the scriptures that he knew and the God he knew was radically different to the God that Jesus revealed. Radically different. How do we know? Because he loved God. Prior to becoming Paul the Apostle, he did love God. Why? Because he had this passion, this ardent passion in his life for God, the God that he believed in, that he felt this whole business of this Messiah and all his followers was nothing short of the devil. That's what he believed. That it was not the work of God. This was the work of the devil. This Messiah was not the Messiah of God. He was some other Messiah. Because he did not fit the bill that Paul, uh, Saul had of God. Then he meets Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. Goes into Arabia for three years. In this time period, Paul unravels through the work of the Holy Spirit and understanding everything that was presented in the Old Testament. He, through Jesus, came to know the true God of the Bible. That was the work of the Holy Spirit working in Paul's life. A man that had one concept of God as Saul and another radically different concept of God as the Apostle Paul. With this study here, what we've done now, I want us to look at how sin originated in the universe. It is extremely important that we grasp how the sin Sometimes we are so inclined to focus on sins instead of focusing on the sin. So we want to look at how did the sin originate in the universe. But before we do that, we must look at one, we, we looked at how Jesus has defined sin. We know exactly all what Jesus has taught as far as sin is concerned. We will look at what the Apostle John states in, the, in his epistle, 1 John 3, 4. In 1 John 3, 4, it clearly states, Whoever committeth sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Now we have to find what that means. How could the Apostle John write and state this? Whoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. What law? We all, we all might think in terms of what? The Ten Commandments. And we'll think transgression of the law of Ten Commandments. But we want to find what is the sin. We are not looking at what are sins. Transgressing the Ten Commandments are the sins. We want to find what the sin is. So the law that is being transgressed is that one law that governed the universe before Lucifer transgressed. 
There was only one law that governed the universe. And what was that law? The law of love. God's law of agape love. That was the law that governed the universe. So, so when that law was transgressed, sin came in. For sin is the transgression of the law of God's agape love. That was the sin. Lucifer committed the sin when he <coughs> went against God's law of agape love. So what comes first? Law or sin? What is it? What comes first? Law or sin? Let us, let us look at a few passages. Okay? Let us look at a few passages. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Romans 3.20, the second part. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Romans 4.15, the second part. Sin is not imputed when there is no law. Romans 5.15, the second part. What say we? What say? What then say we? What say we then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, you shall not cover. So what Paul is stating here, in, in very clear terms, that through the law, he came to know sin. And we must keep this in mind. What law? Again, it was, even though he goes and brings out one the ten and talks in terms of covetousness, he is focusing on the eternal law of God. And Jesus had condensed that eternal, I mean, Jesus had condensed the ten law into the two. But prior to even him condensing the two, there was only one. So you start with the one, then you come down to the ten, then Jesus condenses it again into two. But always, if you take the totality of Europe of the two, it goes back to that one law, the law of God's love. Now, what I want to do is turn to Romans chapter 7. <coughs> and we we'll start with verse 7. And keeping in mind, as we read these passages, I want us now to keep our minds open that we are looking at the sin that originated in the universe with Lucifer. Keep our minds with that focus. So keep it focused on this, that what we are going to look at now, we are thinking in terms of the sin that originated in the universe when Lucifer went against God's law of agape love. Verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Is the law of God's love, God's agape love, sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. Keeping in mind, we are projecting this now to who? To Lucifer and in heaven. On the contrary, Lucifer would not have known sin except because there was the law of agape love. If there was no law of agape love in the universe, Lucifer would not have known sin. So when Lucifer sinned, he had complete and total ultimate knowledge of God's agape love. If he did not, when Jesus said, if I had not spoken to them, they would have no sin. If Lucifer did not have that complete knowledge, he would not have sinned. He had that complete knowledge. But I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, you shall not cover. So Lucifer was told. As his mind started deviating and going in the wrong path, he was brought back and told in every way imaginable God's love. Verse 8, but sin, 
taking opportunity by the commandment produced in me all manner of evil desire. Please keep in mind, we are talking of, Paul is addressing this to himself, but keep in mind that this also applies to Lucifer. But sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, the commandment of agape love, produced in me all manner of evil desire. What was this evil desire that originated in Lucifer's heart, mind, and soul? Okay? For apart from the law, sin was dead. So if there was no agape love, Lucifer would not have committed the sin. I was alive once without the law. Now here, I have to explain this in another way. Keep this in mind. I'm not going to explain it here completely the way it should be because I want to touch on something very important. But keep this in mind here. I was once alive without the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And I will want to know and discuss with you. I was once alive without the law. Verse 10, and the commandment which was to bring life, I found to bring death. Wow. How did this command of God's love, this commandment, and the commandment which was to bring life, brought death. God's agape love commandment brought death. Yes. How? Because Lucifer took this law of agape love. And what he did, he introduced a system that lived by the letter of the law. And the letter of the law kills. But the spirit of the law gives life. He took that away. He introduced a letter of the law mentality. And Paul is very clear, the letter of the law kills. The spirit of the law gives life. How is the letter of the law coming to operation. We're going to look at that. Verse 11. For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it killed me. Therefore, God's law of agape love is holy and the commandment is holy, just and good. And I want us now to look at verses 21 to 23. The same chapter. I find a law that is evil I find a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. This is God's law of agape love. But I see another law in my members wearing against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. We must ask ourselves this important question. What is the law of sin? If we can understand what the law of sin is, it's going to be a tremendous help for us to understand what Lucifer started. Paul in Romans 8.2 tells us, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. So there is a law that is the law of sin and death. And how we are delivered from that law of sin